Thanks for joining me today. Absolutely. So just as kind of a reminder, I know we talked a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. this is just a very informal way. Um, my goal is for this to help your students kind of see who you are as a person rather than the big imposing professor in front of the classroom. Sure. Um, so I'm just really going to ask some questions and um, should last maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Not too long. Okay. Um, so my first question is always, so what got you interested in psychology? Yeah. What got you interested in teaching? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. So, you know, I think for me, psychology, I always, I always kind of reflect on, you know, actually my experience, my first experience with with psychology, I didn't know it as such. So I, growing up, I was really curious about like, why do people, you know, um, you know, human behavior and why do people behave the, the way they did? But I didn't have the kind of terminology of, of thinking about psychology or sociology. Like it, I didn't have those kind of terms at reach, but I've always just been really, really curious about understanding human behavior and not just like for its sake, but also like helping folks. And so, you know, my background is as a clinical psychologist, and, and part of that really had to do with saying, okay, once we understand human behavior, how can we help folks feel healthier, feel whole, more whole, yeah. more optimal? So that really is like an inspiration for me with regard to psychology. Um, interestingly, like in high school, I got a C in my high school <laughs> psychology class, of course, totally and my psychology true. professor uh, at the time was like, yeah, like I was really into natural sciences mm -hmm. at the time, and and they were like, yeah, maybe that's a better, a better fit. So, you know, it all has come together now and worked out. Um, with regard to teaching, I mean, honestly, this is really interesting for me. I think that, you know, as I was getting into kind of my academic career, mm -hmm. I started to really think about like, what is, like, why am I here? Why have I been able to kind of show up? And I just kept thinking about all of these experiences that I had with excellent teachers with excellent professors in high school and, and even middle school, high school, definitely uh, in undergrad and then in grad school. And so just really thinking about like how much those educators like poured into me and how that helped me to kind of be in this field and in this area. And so the idea of being able to kind of awaken folks curiosity in the same way as kind of like paying it forward, so to speak. So I think that's what really like ignites me the most about teaching. Yeah, thanks for, for sharing that. I was going to make sure that's recording. It was it? <laughs> it, it was. Okay. I, I, was, I was looking, I was like, wait a second, it's not showing me anything, but okay. sometimes <laughs> Zoom is too, too fancy for me. Yeah. Um, that's great. So, you know, then getting into like kind of the next part that I'm thinking about with students and, sure. you know, a lot of them are exploring different interests. I know with psychology in particular, it's almost such a large subject to be thinking about that it almost makes them almost paralyzed in, in pursuing interests. How do you find students are successful at really getting involved in psychology in your course, being successful in your course? Is there certain types of attributes or resources that you're seeing them use, or is it kind of just depends on each student? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a, another really good question. So, you know, I think I set out at the very outset of, of my course, uh, Intro to Psychology, I kind of have as a subtitle, like how to learn to love psychology, which is a riff on uh, an ABC uh, <laughs> drama series, How to Get Away with Murder. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> for me, really, the, the piece there is, is helping learners, helping students understand that exactly as you said, psychology is this broad field and you don't have to love every slice and sliver of it to find your area that you love, right? So again, like, again, I'm a clinical psychologist. Uh, I am a faculty in counseling psychology. That's kind of my area. I am, I, and I tell, you know, my students unashamedly this, I'm like, I'm not the biggest like neurotransmitter biopsychology person, but if like the firing of, you know, neurons like really gets you going, like, then let's go deeper there. Okay. Uh, if you're really interested in developmental psychology and how, you know, babies go from crawling to walking to, you know, how they communicate with their parents and how they develop early social friendships, then maybe developmental part of psychology is for you. So I think for me, it's really important to overlay and say, hey, there are these different areas and you don't have to, like, you don't have to, you have to study the whole thing to do well in the class, but you don't have to, like, rebel and love everything just to kind of 
take something away. I think that's one. I think the other part that I see as something that really helps students in my class in particular is finding community. And so like having conversation with other folks. Cool thing about intro is, you know, as you as you probably know, I get to it's a large general ed requirement for a lot of folks. And so in my classes, I'll have, you know, either in person or virtually, you'll have folks, uh, school of engineering, school of nursing, arts, undecided. And so to have folks really engage in saying, I'm thinking about, you know, learning or cognition, but I'm thinking about how that teaches me to be a better sculptor. And you have someone else who's thinking about how it helps them think about circuitry like that's really cool and being able to come together and have conversation together about the application of psychology for folks individual lives for folks individual majors whether it's psychology or not i find is really key for making it as as these you have talked about over the last week, yeah. like making it real like yeah. making it a real kind of tangible thing yeah so then then going in the opposite direction right i mean it's like 101 I struggle with Psych 101. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of students struggle with Psych 101. Mm -hmm. It's a large class, hard to necessarily find your community. Sure. What do you recommend students who are struggling do to try to get to that part where they are that student that's being successful in the class, you know, towards, in their mind, you know, getting an A is the important part. Yep. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if this is going to give me trouble. But I think the first thing is I, I try to, to express this, but I think that the commitment to like improvement and learning, if that starts there, then I think success follows. So I, I often, you know, if a student says, what can I do in this class to get an A? I will say, this is what you can do in the class to get an A. And at the same time, I <laughs> often don't start with like everyone, like success is only measured by the number or the percentage of people who get A's. So, you know, especially in a class like Psych 101, that, does historically have a number of folks who either withdraw or, or don't get the grades that they love. So how can we, how can you find, how can you frame success even, even if it's in the context of a B in the mm -hmm. class and that that's not the, the end all be all. What I would say for, for folks who might find themselves struggling. So one is I try, and, and I hope this is an, another example of this, to make myself as approachable as possible. Yeah. I know for me, I am trying to uh, redo things that I did not do when I was in Psych 101. Yeah. I, I was in a large, uh, a large lecture on campus, and I did not come up to the professor afterwards. So I tried to make myself accessible via kind of virtual coffee hours by just saying there's no such thing as like the silly question. I find that oftentimes students who might struggle in my class, a lot of times it's a misunderstanding of kind of what they are to do, and, and particularly for our, our class, Psych 101, the way it's structured, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah. There's, yeah. There are online labs, and then there are tests, and then there are um, these online communication platforms yeah. that are designed to help you find your community, but yeah. how do I keep up all of that? So I think having early conversations with myself, TA, uh, is, is really helpful. I also think that uh, for a class the size of 101, we're often, it's not always guaranteed, but we often have uh, the supplemental instruction aspect or component to our course. And I think that has really, I have qualitative data floating around my head, sure. but I feel like that has really helped folks kind of take what they're learning, talk it out with other folks during a week uh, and not just the marathon session before mm -hmm. an exam. And that I think helps folks to kind of submit their learning. So I think talking with the folks who are kind of set up to help you succeed in the class um i i encourage uh co-learning so I, I know it's difficult in a virtual format but if you can find you know a, a roommate or someone else like trying to obviously stay within the frames of, of academic honesty but like you know learning together and talking it through i feel like it's been is really helpful um and and then just coming up with a, like a week over week game plan so i try to often like on the learning platforms communicate okay this is this is the learning week okay let's think about everything that's due this week let's think about like at the end of this week what success looks like for yeah. this week and if we think about success and what that looks like over this week then if we add those 16 weeks up we'll have a successful semester so you almost kind of map out how they can organize themselves yes. that's yeah. really that's really useful yeah for sure um so then kind of getting into it and you kind of mentioned this a little bit 
super large class, lots of students. Yeah. And I just remember myself being a student too. It's like, it's so intimidating to talk to someone like you where you feel comfortable talking to 300 students. It's almost like that gives you this confidence that they don't have yet. Mm. So what's what's the limit of, of how they should come approach you? Mm. What if they don't have a question about the class, but they should come talk to you? Like, where's the line? Because I know for a lot of people, it's just hard to know what's the line of why I should go talk to my professor. Mm. So, <laughs> so again, this is my uh, non-company answer. So the first thing I say is, you know, and, and this is not, I, I wanna, before I start here, I know that this is not everyone's perspective, but for me, you know, one of the things I say, whether that's about the Campus Learning Center, mm -hmm. whether that's about the Writing Center, um, is that, hey, you know, whether it is you, whether it is the state, federal government, whether it's your parents, someone, is contributing financially yeah. to you being in this class. These four credits are not free. Yeah. And so part that part of what I like to encourage my students is like take that ownership. So like I don't for me, like I know it may seem that way, but like I I I work to support you you all as students and as learners. And so if you want to say, hey, you know, Dr. Jones, professor you know, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to introduce myself or I just wanted to ask you, do, what is your favorite, who's your favorite character from How to Get Away with Murder? Since that's what you, like, you obviously have shared these things. And so I think that, that, like, for me, the line is, I want, I genuinely want to get to know my students. I actually had a, a scenario this weekend where I was, um, out and I was serving in the community and I ran into someone and they were like, wait, I think I had you one time. And I didn't know, and like, they actually said what well, you said that. I didn't really have a question because I've graduated now, but like, I wanted to like, just come say hello. And I was like, that is completely okay with me. You know, so I think the thing I, I want to honor that it definitely can be intimidating. Yeah. And I also want to honor that you don't have to like, work out the theory of relativity question that's going to change the world to just come and say hello or to just come and you know just even ask me more about myself like the questions we're talking about now like hey how did you get interested in psychology hey you know what are other what are other kind of classes that you would recommend hey what do you do for self care you know i think um, those things are are all on the table and for a lot of our first year students also like recognizing, hey, where is the Campus Learning Center? Hey, where is the writing enough. center that you're talking about? I, I know that writing assignment one is coming up. You've talked about this writing center. How do I access that? Like, that is something that I feel like is within my wheelhouse to either directly answer or get you a resource to. So I think if you think about the plethora of ways in which you can approach and that it doesn't have to be this like, you know, world record breaking question sure. that you can come to me with whatever, um, I think I hope hope that helps folks feel like I'm more approachable. So then, kind of going off of that, then you know there are students. You know we have our students that struggle. We also have our students who are just very successful. But yeah. not just that, but they're already thinking about what they want to accomplish in their three four years, and they're already looking at you and like, <laughs> okay, how do I get a letter of recommendation from Dr. Jones? How do I become a TA someday? Yeah. How do I get involved in research? Yeah. What would you? What would you expect or want to see from those students who maybe want more than just an A, but they also want future opportunities with you or, or to have your support in some of those endeavors over time? Yeah, so so this actually, you know, I've, I've, I've had a lot of joy because this has actually happened in my relatively short time here, I've been here three years. This has happened enough times to be <laughs> memorable, right? Where, you know, I, for me, one of the things that, that I will say, and you know, I think your professors of large courses don't say this, they're either in the Guinness Book World <laughs> Record for memory retention, or they're being a little dishonest. In a class of 300 folks, I, I try my best to recognize faces, to connect faces with names. But if we start thinking about 300 a semester times X semesters, like it, it, it does happen that um, all folks don't maybe stick the same way. So I think, you know, the truth of the matter is if you feel, if you feel, or even if you don't feel and you do it, <laughs> do it scared, mm -hmm. I think as many touch points of genuine connection sure. that you can make uh, will help me to think about, okay, 
um, this is this student. And I cannot just say, I cannot just look back at the grade book and say they got an A, but I can talk about how when we had coffee at the Capitol Library of Starbucks, they were telling me then how they were so interested in this career. And then they followed up with me next semester and told me about how they successfully got to work with one of my colleagues in one of my colleagues' research team labs. And that like narrative or trail of communication, that consistent communication allows me with something like a letter of recommendation or something like when a colleague says, hey, this person had you in class and they said you recommended my team. What can, it just gives you more data, more opportunities, more stories to say, oh yeah, that student is, is, is phenomenal. So I think for those who kind of know that trajectory or have a good sense, I would just encourage them to have as many of those kind of meaningful conversations as possible. Sure. Um, and I know, again, I'm imperfect. So there, there are times when someone might reach out. So I think persistence definitely does pay off, pay off for sure. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes I've had, you know, students who are like, Hey, I tried to I tried to reach you, or I know it's the last ten minutes of coffee hours, but do you have maybe these ten minutes plus five more minutes yeah. um, just to kind of you know broach that conversation? So those those experiences I think are really are really key and really critical to kind of um, taking you off the pace, so to speak. In that sense. I love the fact that you mentioned even like to keep in contact with you after the class is over. I know when I was in career services, I had so many students where they're like. I had a good relationship with this professor, but it's been now a year or two since I've contacted them. And I always remember going, so we reach back out, like they would yeah. love to hear back from me. Yeah. So it's really refreshing to hear that from your side saying like, you're allowed to talk with me even after I give you a grade. Yeah, it's it's been really, really like, and for me again, to go circle back to the first question you asked, like to yeah. me, that's what makes being a professor worth it. It's mm -hmm. like, I often, you know, I may not say, oh gosh, I wonder what happened to Joshua Jenkins, you know, but I may think that. And so when I hear from, you know, and that's the thing, I, I think students sometimes may, may think, oh, my professor doesn't remember, they don't care. It is so awesome to hear about the, the, the internship you got, you know, the, the research team you got into, the grad school program that you're applying to, like those stories make my, my day actually. So, um, or even, even someone who's like, you know, I like Chipotle. So like, even when I'm at Chipotle and they're like, hey, like, hey, you know, okay, well, what have you been doing since then? Well, actually I changed my major to psych or you actually made me realize I don't love psych as much. So I changed my major to, to X, Y, Z, like those stories I carry with me. So yeah. I think that's why that's really cool to like hear, um, hear that over time. And I think about, again, my relationships with professors. Um, I remember when I got into college and reached back out to, you know, a middle school professor and was like, hey, you know, you were the first person who told me, like, you yeah. can do this. And so, like, those stories, I know, I hope, brightened up those folks' days and definitely brightened my day. So, yeah. I can, I appreciate that. I got a letter. It must have been sent by this student or alumni now mm -hmm. six months ago because she's referencing getting sent to the med school on December 16th. And she was just thanking me for, for helping her. I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. And I just pinned it up in my new office to yeah. remind me, like, to keep doing that work. Yeah, exactly. Um, so kind of going in a, in a little bit of a different direction, going back to students in Psych 101 that, you know, at VCU we have such a diverse set of students. A lot of them are working part-time or full-time mm -hmm. or have family in the area or in different areas of Virginia that are struggling. Mm -hmm. What does it look like in your class flexibility-wise, communication-wise, if a student has something come up, um, life comes up, yeah. Do they, is there flexibility for, for the tests, for homework, for communicating with you? How does that look? Yeah, the, the, the short answer is, is absolutely. The longer answer is, I think that I, you know, so for, for myself, I, I don't know if this is actually a, a term, but I often tell my class, like, I am, I call myself like 1.5 generation college student. So what I mean by that is I got my high school diploma the same year that my my mother, who had been kind of in and out of different community, you know, junior colleges, eventually got a bachelor's degree. Wow. Like when I was graduating high school, she got a bachelor's degree in undergrad. And so, wow, that means I am not first generation from the 
the pure definition from a cultural standpoint yeah. and from like just how to navigate college life it was just very different yeah. because she was going to school on and off throughout raising me whereas I was not in that same position yeah. and so I was like still navigating and figuring out the landscape and had things come up and life happen and lose loved ones so I've always I've always endeavored to like have that perspective and, and remember that what those experiences felt like and either what I really appreciated about professors or what I really would have appreciated for, from professors in terms of understanding but then the pandemic happened and that has completely revolutionized my perspective on flexibility and just really values and thinking about what matters so for me I'm at a point with regard to one-on-one where Flexibility is the name of the game. Sure. I have learned and understood more. I have been to my local stores, like not just my Chipotle's, where I've seen students in my class busting their tail. I recognize that they're not going to get off until midnight, and then they're trying to do this thing. So for me, it is communication is really, you know, that is really the key to the flexibility. So like, I want to help every student succeed, yeah. and I need to understand not intimately you don't have to tell me every single thing I think sometimes that is a burden too I don't yeah. want to burden students to say oh I have to open up and unfurl my whole life yeah. to get this flexibility that said having a line of communication to say either with me or with my TA to say hey I'm you know I'm, I'm I know that this thing is due and I really want to get it in but if I also want to really do my best and and those two things don't align with me getting off at two o'clock in the morning. Is there any yeah. way that I could get a modest extension? Or I just want to let you know, what do you think I should do? And oftentimes my response to that is going to be, yeah, we can extend this. Yeah, we can. And, and I think that to me, the reason why that communication is critical to the flexibility is because it becomes a matter of equity right so mm -hmm. we often think about equality which is like everyone gets the same thing i don't teach from the perspective of equality i teach from the perspective of equity sure and i but but that also means we start somewhere and then we make those modifications and so that 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 kind of those deadlines those dates that you see in the syllabus that is like this terrain but if you have a lot of demands or something comes up or you're sick which has happened a lot yeah. right i don't want you like in the, your hospital bed like turning in a launch pad lab like let let me know and we can like yeah. we can adjust that and that's how we make it equitable um for everyone so those would i, I know that probably sounds easier said than done but that would be kind of my sure my encouragement yeah it, it's so great to hear you know how fundamental the communication piece is in just throughout all the different aspects that we've talked about where it's you just kind of come and talk yeah. or you know email or email, phone call, like whatever yeah. whatever yes medium i'm sure it works mm -hmm. um so my last question i always like to end on this one how would you like your students to perceive you mm. that's a really good question we did not have these questions in advance by the way y'all so this is i'm gonna take a, i'm gonna take that like moment that i sometimes yeah. take in my class yeah. when students ask really good questions and i don't know um let me think about that yeah, yeah. take your time So, so I want, I ultimately would want my students to perceive me as a couple of things to come into mind. So one, to reiterate what I said before that I am, not that I am their servant, but I am in service to them. So I want, I want, you know, students to perceive what I feel is the role of all professors, which is like, we are in this space to serve students. We are, we are in a human service kind of arena or sphere, so to speak. And so I think that's one, which is like not the other way around. Like you, you are not there, you are there to learn, you're there to, 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 you know, glean as much as you can from the subject matter, but don't feel like you don't have agency to say what your needs are mm -hmm. so I, that's one one place i want okay. uh, one way i want folks to perceive me i think at a deeper level i want like i i have thought about this a lot given um 
particularly my identity as, as a black professor and, and what that means uh, in, in the larger context of how many folks who look like me are professors. <laughs> um, so I understand the, you know, the importance of, you know, Dr. Jones, or like, so I, I definitely am like, I don't want to be like the buddy buddy, right? That said, I, I also don't want to be seen as like superhuman. So I want to be seen as like, just like the same humanity that you have, I have as well. Like we have shared humanity. And so I am a person, things happen for me, um, just like I'm sure they happen for you. Um, and so that understanding that we have that in common, no matter how many letters are behind my name relative to, you know, how many years I've been in school, we're still human, right? And so there, there, that connects us in terms of uh, things that come up, needs, emergencies, priorities, et cetera. Yeah. And then I, then my, my real hope, and this again, it's not, I know this is not for everyone who's, who walks into my classroom, but I also would love for as many students as it makes sense to see themselves in me, to see, and, and that comes with me telling my truth and my storytelling. Yeah. But I think through that across the course of the semester, my hope is that students can say, wow, when I first walked into this class, I was like, what? This Dr. Jones guy, like what? But by the end, it's like, I could, I could do that. Like I could, I could get there. I could, I could be standing up in front of folks and teaching them to learn to love psychology as well, right? Which again, for me is through being honest, mm -hmm. um, through being real to, to share like, hey, yeah, sometimes I mess up too. Yeah, I didn't have a 4.59 GPA, like no. And so I think that's the other, the other, the third part, right? So again, seeing me as someone who's in service to them, um, just seeing our common humanity and then the ability to kind of like dream potential to say like, hey, I at one point in time was a student like you who was sitting there like, what? How does this person know so much? And so to, to that idea that, that you can be in this same position, if that's what you want, too, like I think is something else uh, that would be really like important for me. Thank you so much for, for sharing that and thank you so much for joining me for the science of coffee.